we'll see analysis of a continuous beam uh, with with sinking uh, case and with overhang both sinking and the overhang problem clear so let me have a problem first one end is fixed and another end is overhang i have eccentric point load for the first span udl in the sec second span and overhang for the third one so 20 kN 100 kN this is 20 kN per meter you have 6 meter first span 5 meter and 1.5 meter this is 4 meter all right now in this problem uh, the value of ei is given rigidity ei is 24 24000 kN meter square is a value given and uh, it is given that joint b is sinking down by joint b is sinking by 15 mm joint b is sinking by 15 mm and other joints are not sinking so this is a b c so that means if i show you so this is joint b sinking down others are at same position so this value is 15 mm right um now first step is you should assign the uh, calculate the dk value so what is dk for this so dk value is 2 here what are those two uh, the joint a will have no deformation but joint b b will have rotation and joint c will have this is c this is d and joint c will have the rotation clear so that means you have two rotations theta b and theta c two unknowns while axial is uh, restrained because it is a rigid uh, um, a rigid beam so axial is, axial deformation is uh, restricted while you have only deformation rotation at b and c so you have the two unknown values uh, that is uh, theta b and theta c now next step is this is first one now second step is to calculate the uh, stiffness matrix so we are trying to solve this uh, analyze this beam by matrix stiffness method using Uh, system approach right now to have the stiffness matrix stiffness matrix so what you need to do is this is the beam right so for first column what you need to do is you have to give unit displacement at coordinate 1 so i will assign the coordinate first what are those coordinates i'll assign the coordinates so you have theta b means coordinate number 1 this is coordinate number 1 theta c this is coordinate number 2 this is coordinate number 2 right now what you need to have is you have to uh, give unit displacement at coordinate number 1 so that means suppose if i have a rotation at b clear so that means the uh, the beams connected to joint b will rotate in clockwise direction that means this will move down and this will move up so this is the rotation so this value delta is value equal to 1 and this delta is equals to 1 so i am giving unit displacement now you have to give unit displacement and what you need to find is you have to determine the forces induced so what are the forces induced now the forces induced is so where you apply there you have force as 4ei by l 
for member BC and similarly for EI by L for member AB. Clear? And what is the direction? Its direction is uh, clockwise. And our coordinate direction is also clockwise. Now at other end, this, root, uh, this force will be half. So how much it will be? It will be 2 EI over L. Even you have the force at A also, but I am not interested at point A because our coordinates are at B and C. So that means uh, 1 and 2 are is at B and C. So there you have to have the force. Now calculate now what is K11 now? What is K11? K11 is the force at 1 due to unit displacement at 1. So how to determine this? So equate this to the, compare this figure with the uh, coordinate figure. So where is 1? 1 is at B. At B, you have two values, 4 EI by L and 4 EI by L. So direction of 1 is clockwise and the direction of the forces induced both are also clockwise. So therefore, K11 is 4 EI by L for member AB plus 4 EI by L for member BC, right? Now substitute the values for E. You need not to substitute EI equal to 24,000 here. Later on that EI will get cancelled. Now right now what you have to do is this EI is EI. Span itself you just substitute. Span for AB is 6 meters. And for next span it is 4 EI is I. And length for the second span is 5 meters. Phi, right? Now, if I solve this, I will get 1.46 EI. This is K11. Now, similarly, K21 is force induced at 2, right? And when the unit displacement is at 1, still your unit displacement is at 1, I am determining force at 2, right? So, for that, where is 2? 2 is at uh, C at C our force is 2 EI by L right this is the other this is the force and the direction of this is clockwise and the direction of the force uh, coordinate 2 is also clockwise so therefore it is plus 2 EI by 2 EI by L substitute L equals to um, well, this is for which span 2 EI by L 2 EI by L is for span BC this is for span BC substitute L as 5 meters then you will get it as 0.4 EI. This is for uh, uh, the K2. This is K21. Now this is the first column. What you got is this is first column. How to determine first column? Give unit displacement. Displacement at 1. And determine forces at 1 and 2. Right now, similarly, the second column. For second column, what you need to have is give unit displacement, unit displacement at coordinate number two, at coordinate two, and what you have to determine is find forces induced. Forces induced at 1 and 2 so at 1 and 2 so how it is draw the figure you have a fixed beam here fixed end you have one span here another span here right our coordinate is 2 is clockwise right for clockwise so if i rotate this clockwise so that means this beam will hog so that means this span will hog that is bc span will hog up so that means the member bc will rotate in clockwise direction right so this is delta equals to one you are giving unit displacement clear and what you have to find is you have to find determine the forces induced how, how what is the force induced so the force here is clockwise for ei by l and at the other end right at the other end uh, it will be half of this so much it will be 2 ei by l and it will be in the same direction 2 ei by l 
but there will be no forces for span ab because ab span will not be affected when you have a rotation at c when you have a rotation at c only bc span will rotate right in clockwise direction that means wherever you apply a couple the member connected to that couple will rotate according to the direction of the couple so you are applying at c means only bc sp uh, span will rotate but while ab will not rotate but in earlier you had applied at b so the member connected to b where b and bc so both were rotating so now there is only this so that means forces at a there will be no forces at a now clear now determine what the forces induced so what is that forces induced k second column is k 1 to what is k 1 to k 1 to is the force induced at 1 again when you have unit displacement at 2 this figure is unit displacement at 2 so where you are determining you are determining force at 1 where is 1 1 is at b so at b at b what is the force induced it is 2 ei over l force induced is 2 ei over l and this 2 ei over l is for which span it is for bc span right substitute l for bc span you will get it as 0.4 ei right you get 0.4 ei now similarly k22 what is k22 k22 is force induced at 2 due to unit displacement at 2 due to unit displacement at 2 so what is the force induced at 2 2 is at c coordinate for 2 is at c what is the force at c it is 4 ei by l so direction of 4 ei by l is clockwise and the direction of coordinate number 2 is also clockwise so therefore it is plus 4 ei by l this is for which span this this is for again span bc substitute span length of span bc you will get it 0.8 ei now you have ended with uh, the uh, first column and the second column that means you have two unknowns means the size of the matrix will be 2 by 2 so therefore your k matrix will be the first matrix the first column is 1.46 0.40 0.45 and 0.80 you can take it ei outside and if you see the element 1 2 and 2 1 are one and the same clear so you should get same because k 1 2 is equal to k 2 1 this is the stiffness matrix now next step number 3 is the locking forces so what is that locking forces calculate the locking forces locking forces now the effect of your sinking there are two ways to account for sinking of a support right one way is you can account the sinking of a support in um, the fixed and moments itself that is the locking forces or you can account directly in the slope deflection equation what is that slope deflection equation you have mab is equal to mfab plus 2 ei over l um, plus into bracket 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta over l so that minus 3 delta delta over l that delta is nothing but your sinking of a support you can account there only or you can account in uh, the fixed and moments so what i do is in this problem i just account that in fixed and moment but while uh, taking the slope deflection equation in the slope deflection equation i will take it at take it as zero there doesn't mean the sinking is zero because already have accounted in the uh, fixed and moments so how to do that i will just show you so you have fixed and moments due to loading fixed and moment due to loading this is one span first span this is second span first span is eccentric point load second span span is udl right this is 4 meter this is 2 meter and this is 5 meter so 20 and this is 100 so calculate the fixed and moments what are the fixed and moments here the fixed and moments are this is anti clockwise direction this is clockwise this is anti clockwise anti clockwise so these are the fixed and moments induced right what is the equation this is fixed and moment due to fem fixed and moment due to loading right so this is m a b m dash a b or you can take it as or this for eccentric load it is w a b square by l square
this is w a b square by l square this is w a square b by l square and this is w l square by 12 w l square by 12 so these are the fixed end movement due to loading right first one what are its values you can just substitute w a b square by l square w, w a, a, a a square b by l square and w l square by 12 if i substitute that i will get answers as first value is um, 44 this is 44.45 and first second value is 88.89 next is 41.67 and the last value is 41.61 what are these w a square b by l square w a w a b square by l square w a square b by l square w l square by 12 w l square by 12 so these are the values this is the fixed end movement due to loading now similarly fixed end movement due to sinking second is second value is second is fixed end movement due to sinking sinking of support right how to account this one is this is uh, joint a is at the same position joint b is sinking down right this is joint b which is sinking down right this is a this is b right joint b is sinking down right but joint c is again at the same position this is c so if i see the figure here see joint a is at the same position joint b is sinking down and joint c is at the same position right so this is how i have separated span a b and b c clear now what you need to have is uh, please be uh, careful here uh, i should have uh, a force here so that it should sink down what should be its direction its direction should be anti-clockwise if i apply anti-clockwise couple only then only this b will sink down if i have a clockwise couple then the b will the joint b will hog up here so uh, if sinking means it is sinking down now so if it is sinking down i should have an anti-clockwise couple at joint b for a b member then only it will sink down so this is how you should identify the direction the same direction will be here so this is anti-clockwise the same anti-clockwise will be here right similarly for the span bc for span bc right if this joint has to uh, come down i should have a clockwise couple here you can rotate it right apply you can take a stick apply a clockwise couple that joint will come down and this same clockwise will be here clear if you apply a anti-clockwise couple here see if i apply a anti-clockwise couple like this right then it will hit from top and bend down so this is the sinking right and if i apply suppose clockwise couple this is clockwise couple if i apply anti-clockwise couple so suppose if i apply anti-clockwise couple it will hit from the bottom and it will bend up right so this is the difference now it, this should be anti-clockwise as uh, clockwise then only this joint will come down and the same uh, anti -clock, uh, same clockwise couple here and what is its values its values are what are its values it is 6 ei delta over l square 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 right now 6 ei delta over l square at uh, substitute the values now you have to substitute ei equal to 24000 what is delta this is delta this is 15 mm means 0 0.015 meters right this is sinking down now if i substitute ei equal to 24000 and delta is 0 0.015 and span ab this is for ab these first two are for AB, next two are for BC. 
clear if i substitute accordingly the distances here then i will get this as for ab i will get it as 60 this will be 60 and for bc i will get it as 86.4 this is 86.4 clear now these these are the fixed end moments due to sinking of a support these are fixed end moments due to loading now these together you have to overlap now how to overlap now compare these two figures with the coordinate figure this is the coordinate figure our coordinate now one is at b which is clockwise right um, and i have to equate it to what i have to equate it to uh, at b how many you have this is a this is b this is c at b i have two values here w a square b by l square and w l square by 12 one is clockwise another is anti-clockwise similarly due to sinking one is uh, 60 another is 86.4 at b this is b and uh, what are its direction this is anti-clockwise direction this is clockwise direction now you equate those so locking force at coordinate one so p dash equals to one is at coordinate number one where is that coordinate number one uh, if i just coordinate one is locking force at coordinate one that is at b what is that b b value what is its value compare it so how many values we have two values at b for uh, due to loading one is 88.9 and 41.67 88.9 is clockwise our coordinate direction is clockwise means the forces induced clockwise will be positive anti-clockwise will be negative now clear so plus 88.89 plus 88.89 minus anti-clockwise minus 41.67 41.67 next this is due to uh, sinking uh, that is uh, fixed end moments due to loading now sinking of support it is plus 60 minus 86.4 clockwise this is sorry the first value is anti-clockwise that is 60 so minus 60 and i have 86.4 clockwise plus 86.4 clear if you calculate this you will get it 73.62 kilonewton meter Similarly, at C, that is at coordinate, at coordinate two, that is at, at C. So what you get is, this is P one dash. I can say this is P two dash. So what I get is at C, I have one value of due to uh, sinking, um, due to uh, loading, and one value due to sinking. One value due to loading is clockwise. W L square two. It is forty one point six seven plus forty one point six seven plus 41.67 and due to sinking i have again clockwise for 86.4 plus 86.4 so this will be 12.128.07 kilonewton meter so these are the two values of locking forces that means our column will be so the matrix p dash is first value is 73.62 second value is 128.07 so this is the matrix locking force matrix now external force matrix next step um, fourth step fourth step is external force matrix what is that external force matrix it is matrix p how to determine this matrix p what are the forces, external forces acting at coordinate number one and coordinate number two? See, there is no force at coordinate number one in terms of our coordinates are uh, uh, rotations. That is, you have to equate it to couple, right? So, there is no couple, external couple at B. But at C, that is at coordinate number two, I will have this overhanging effect. What is that overhanging effect? 20 into 1.5. So, I will have a couple here, 20 into 1.5. 20 into 1.5 i'll just use a different color for this right so 20 into 1.5 so it will be clockwise right uh, 20 into 1.5 you just rotate it that couple will have direction clockwise which is 20 into 1.5 which is equal to 30 kilonewton meter 
so the force at c this you can account as the external force what is its direction its direction is clockwise our coordinate direction 2 is also clockwise so therefore it will be plus 30 so first value will be zero at coordinate number one the force is zero there is no external force available there at coordinate number two i have available uh, 30 kilo newton meter which is the same direction of the coordinate so which is plus 30 so this is the external force matrix next is only the calculations what is that calculation step number five what is that step number five I have to determine the unknown displacement. What is that unknown displacement? Unknown displacement delta is equal to K inverse into P minus P dash. P minus P dash. Right? K inverse matrix. What is that K inverse matrix? K is K matrix is 1.46 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.8 1 by EI inverse will be EI now, right? This is inverse into P matrix is P minus P dash. P is 0, 30 minus P dash is 73.62 and 98, 128.07. Right now, how to do this? First, take the inverse of a matrix. Inverse of a matrix is interchange the principal diagonal elements 0 0.8, 1.46. Change the sign of the other two elements minus 0 0.4, minus 0 0.4, and the determinant value. Determinant value is 1.46 into 0 0.8 minus 0 0.4 square into the the matrix. This matrix is. 0 minus this minus 73.62 and 30 minus 128 that is minus 98.07 right if i simplify this right i will get it as delta 1 and delta 2 as delta 1 and delta 2 as minus 19.51 and minus 112.85 I will get these two values, right? And this EI and this EI, I will have, uh, if I send it to this side, it is 1 by EI. Sorry, this was um, in terms of EI, right? So 1 by, you will get it, you will get it as 1 by EI in versus 1 by EI. Right. So this in terms of one by EI, right? This is the displacement. What are these displacement? This is theta B and this is theta C. Theta B is 15.51 uh, that 15.51 uh, by EI and theta EI delta one. This is C. This is EI delta one is nothing but your EI theta B, right? How much it is? It is minus 12 minus 19.51 anti-clockwise negative will get, get it so it is anti-clockwise so ei delta 2 is nothing but your ei theta c so it is minus 112.85 which is also anti-clockwise i have assumed clockwise rotation but i have got it negative that is because therefore it will be anti-clockwise rotation now finally with these two um, displacement you have to determine what you have to determine the movements what are those movements now uh, lastly the last step step number five step number five is final movements final movements so how to determine these final movements by applying the slope deflection equation so m a b is equal to m f a b plus 2 e i over l into bracket 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta over l this is the equation now right what is m f a b m f a b now it is fixed end moments now this fixed end moments there are two one is fixed end moment due to 
loading another is fixed end moment due to sinking of support both you have to take so what is that both you have to take one is fixed end moment due to see fixed end moment due to loading is anti clockwise 44.45 minus and fixed end moment due to sinking of support is 60 which is anti clockwise again minus so i have the value as minus 44.45 four five and minus 60 so this is fixed end moment plus i over l plus 2 ei over l you can take 2 ei outside plus 2 by l l for span a b is 6 2 by 6 into bracket 2 ei theta a 2 in 2 ei theta a what is ei theta a theta a is 0 because there is no this uh, this one now theta a is 0 so first value is 0 because there is no rotation at uh, end a because of fixity now 2 uh, next is theta b ei theta b what is that ei theta b ei theta b uh, value is minus 19.51 so plus into bracket minus 19.51 right next and lastly, 3 EI delta, I am taking this delta as 0 now. Because already I have accounted this delta in uh, the fixed end moments. So I will take it 0 here. Correct? If not, if you are not accounted in uh, the fixed end moments there, so you can take it directly here. So both will both will be same. See, 2 into 3, 6 EI delta by L square. Again, the, the moment induced due to sinking will be 6 EI delta by L square. The same is here. Clear? Now with this, the answer will be minus 110 kilonewton, 0.94 kilonewton meter. This is AB. Similarly, MBA will be MFBA. MFBA is fixed uh, due to sink, uh, due to loading. It is 88.89 positive and minus 60 due to sinking of support. This is MFAB plus 2 by L. 2 by L is 6 into bracket 2 times theta b so 2 times theta b minus 19.51 plus 1 times theta a 0 minus 3 delta l 3 i delta over l 0 so you'll get it as mba you'll get it as 15.6 kilonewton meter next mab mba mbc what is mbc mfbc 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 is 41.67 negative and here sinking of support uh, clockwise 86.4 so your MFBC will be minus 41.67 plus 86.4 this is fixed end moments right plus 2 by L 2 divided by L L for BC is 5 meters into bracket 2 times theta b 2 times theta b minus 19.51 plus 1 times theta c it is minus 112.85 and 3 delta over l 0 right so you'll get it as mf mbc as minus 15.6 kilonewton meter so it will be same as that of mfcb mf BA is equal to MF BC, right? So the moment is balanced. Next, MCB. What is MCB? Uh, fixed end moment due, due to loading is 41.61 plus fixed end moment due to sinking of support is plus 86.4. This is M, MFCB plus 2 by L, 2 divided by L for span BC is 5 meters into bracket 2 ei 2 2 uh, 2 theta c so what is 2 theta c 2 ei theta c theta c is minus 112.85 and 2 theta b 1 theta b it is minus 19.51 plus 3 delta over l 0 so you'll get it as you should get it 30 only clear kilonewton meter because you are uh, mcd mcd what is mcd see the orang moment mcd is 30 kilonewton meters right 
20 into from dc it is plus 20 into 1.5 from cd it is minus so mcd will be you will get it as mcd is minus 20 into 1.5 directly you need not apply the equation here so it is 20 into 1.5 minus 30 kilonewton meter so then only it will be balanced this and this will be balanced so these are the final fixed moments with this you can calculate uh, the you can draw the bending moment diagram and calculate the shear and draw the shear force diagram so this problem uh, completes with uh, what is that this problem is of sinking of support with overhang how to account sinking of support and the overhang for uh, analyzing a continuous beam by a stiffness method using uh, the system approach thank you